I'm here today with uh, Graham Tomlin. He is uh, Bishop of Kensington and President of St. Melitus College uh, right. in London. Uh, we're here in uh, New Haven, Connecticut at uh, Yale Divinity School for a conversation about the future of mm. theology, a small, a small narrow conversation. A very small topic. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Graham, if I may, yeah. I'm so glad that you're able to be here. Delighted to be here. Looking, really looking forward to it. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're going to have a lot of conversation over the next couple days in which we're going to talk um, about some of the things that are uh, troublesome or, or worrisome in, uh, in kind of what's happening in, in theology uh, these days. Um, but why don't we start on the, let's, let's start on, on, on the positive side. Mm, um, mm. As, as you take a look at a theology that's practiced um, or taught in various mm. different contexts, mm. um, what do we have to be encouraged by? What's, what's going mm. right mm. in theology these days? Well, uh, from my perspective, I, and certainly I look at it things from the UK, and that may be different from here in the US, but I do see a, a greater movement towards theology connecting with the church. I think um, theology has been done much more in church contexts now, uh, which I think is a, is a good thing. Um, one of the things that uh, is worth exploring is, you know, where does theology happen? Mm. And uh, I notice a number of churches, both in the UK and, and elsewhere in the world as well, that are, that are quite um, becoming more serious about, about theology. And, uh, and I notice also um, university, university faculties who are taking the church more seriously as a context for theology. So I think that's all to the good. Um, I also see uh, theology making connections with um, questions of human life and discipleship uh, and, and prayer and uh, the whole um, realm of what one might call a kind of spiritual theology, a theology that is devoted to the, to, to the, uh, uh, the nurturing of Christian life, the nurturing of good, excellent human life, I think is a really positive development. I think one of the example of that is what you do here in, in, in Yale in the Human Flourishing Project and other things. Um, I, you know, I look at people like Ellen Cherry and the work she's doing, uh, again, in places like Princeton. Um, uh, you know, thinking about what does, you know, how does theology contribute to the living of a, of a good human life. And um, so I, I think th those are all good things to be celebrated. There's connections between the theology of the church, theology and the living of the Christian life and theology and prayer and worship, those things are, and I, I sense those are on the rise uh, as, op as opposed to, you know, in the past, they've often been seen as quite separate from the theological task. Mm. Well, and then, and then what, what is it that we do have to be um, worried about or troubled about? Or is, is there anything kind of not yeah. going, not as it ought to be uh, yeah. with theology these yeah. days? Yeah. Well, I guess it's true generally of a lot of, a lot of um, academic life and intellectual endeavor that as um, that broadens out, it becomes very fragmented and it becomes quite... Um, uh, isolated and abstruse and sometimes you read theological work that sometimes goes on in in university faculties and you, it, it seems like a sort of small conversation happening amongst a very small group of people um, very detailed erudite books being written for other very detailed erudite people and uh, um, uh, there's a perhaps a necessary stage in someone's academic career where you do that you know you write your doctorate and you probably know that there aren't that going to be that many people are going to read the book. Um, but if that's all it ever is, if it becomes a little small conversation amongst a few people who are interested in that kind of thing, then it, um, uh, it really does raise questions about, about the nature and future of Christian theology. Um, I think we do have to be concerned about the ways in which, certainly in the UK, there are quite a lot of theology faculties that are under, under pressure in universities. Um, there's that sense that theology... You know, uh, the sort of secular um, universities often see theology as, well, they, they don't produce people who are set up to do jobs. It doesn't produce sort of quantifiable knowledge in terms of scientific discovery. It doesn't produce something that's economically valuable. You know, is it worth doing in itself? Um, and, and especially you know, sometimes if universities become more aggressively secular, uh, there's a sort of desire to sort of sh shove theology to the margins, theology Theology departments have to then reinvent themselves as religious studies departments or something like that, um, and, and that that again begins to er kind of erode the theological task from from our life together. So I think that's a concern. Um, uh, there is a sense that um, the world outside 
the church doesn't necessarily listen to theologians that much. Um, there's an element of truth for that. I suspect there's always been a bit of truth to that anyway. And that may be partly theologian's fault as much as the world's fault, rather than um, you know, always blaming someone else for the fact that they don't listen to us. But uh, I think those are the kind of things that we just have to be quite concerned about, which is why I think these, these, these movements of connecting the, the, the uh, theology with the church, with, the, with Christian life, and with prayer are so significant for us. Mm. You talk in your um, paper today about uh, three different audiences mm. um, that uh, theology has in three different, uh, kind of in three different contexts. Mm. Uh, if you lay those out for us, like, mm. I found that really, sure. really helpful. I mean, it seems to me when we do theological work, it's not like we're doing it for one particular purpose. There are a range of different purposes or audiences or directions or trajectories that, um, uh, that we do theology in. Um, it seems to me that the first audience for theology actually is God. Uh, it seems we, we, we do our theology in, in this sense, not for anything. There's no particular purpose for it. We do it simply as a response of rational beings to a God who has revealed himself to us in in, in Christ. And um, to, to, to that extent, and there's a long tradition of Christian theology, both in the East and the West, uh, of theology done as worship, uh, as prayer, uh, as a simple response to God. Some of the great works of Christian theology of the past precisely are that. They're, they're in the form of prayer. You think of Augustine's Confessions, you think of Anselm's Proslogion and things like that. I mean, they're, they're basically the mind addressing God, trying to explore uh, and declare the praises of God, if you like, in theological language. That's the first audience of God, of, of theology. Second audience, I think, is the church. Um, and if the first is theology in the mode of worship, this, I think, is theology in the mode of, of, of reform, in the sense that the church is, is this semper reformanda. It's that the church is always being uh, reformed. The church always needs to be addressed with the word of God again. And um, in this mode of theology, it seems to me that what we do is we direct our theological work to and for the sake of the church to remind the church of its identity, to uh, explore the, the kind of internal um, uh, coherence and structure of theology, to enable the church to be the church, to enable the church to be the people of God called out to, in order to be a blessing to the rest of humanity and the rest of the world. So there is a, there is a, a, a kind of ecclesial audience for theology. And I think the third early audience, I think, is, is, is the world. Um, that there is a, uh, a sense in which theology is always has to be in conversation with other disciplines, uh, reacting and responding to what is going on within the world uh, around us. Um, uh, and so there's, there's always a, a kind of, that's, this is theology as witness. This is theology as um, uh, declaring uh, what, what life looks like seen through the lens of the gospel, as it were. And uh, I think it just is helpful to clarify those three audiences, those three modes of theology, because they are subtly different. There's overlap between them all. You can find yourself doing the same thing. You can look at the doctrine of the Trinity in all three modes, but the way you do it is, also, is always slightly different. Hmm. So given our, our context, um, so sticking on the, the kind of third audience of, of mm. the world right mm. now, given the mm. increasing kind of pluralistic context in which we find, our, find ourselves, mm. um, what, does, what does theology have to, to offer because it addresses this audience, um, what does it offer that audience? Why should that mm. audience be interested mm. in what sure. theology yep. has to say? Yep. I think there's a number of reasons why it's Im important and why it's actually crucial, I think, for, for the pluralistic world we're in at the moment. Um, partly because it seems to me the great visions that are driving human culture and society at the moment, are actually, not, they're no longer political. They're primarily religious now, mm. for better or worse. Mm. And we know religion can be a... Um, a tragedy as well as a, a, a great promise for the world as well. But, you know, the secularization thesis seemed to suggest that religion would just gradually disappear as, as, as societies and the whole world became uh, more advanced and secular. But actually that hasn't happened at all. Religious visions uh, are extremely powerful right the way across the world. And you can, you can see examples of that in all different faiths, in all different cultures, all different continents. And understanding that, understanding the dynamics of that is absolutely vital for our, for our world today. And I, and I think I'd go as far as to say, if you don't really understand religion, if you don't understand faith, if you don't understand theology, you can't really understand the modern world um, because it is such a major um, uh, part of motivation for so many people across the world. Does that mean, though, that the mode of theology that the world actually needs 
is precisely religious studies? Uh, not necessarily, no, because it seems to me you can't really separate out the two because um, you can treat religion as a sort of separate object for study. You can think of it, you know, religious practices and religious history and religious, um, um, you know, community life and so on. You can study it objectively, but it seems to me that, that actually that one has to actually inhabit it to be able to really understand it, which is why, um, in one sense, I, you know, I, I always question the, quote, the, 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 the actual description of something called religion. It's a, it's a sort of secularist's way of putting it in a little box and studying it and examining it. Mm -hmm. But actually, um, it's like sort of taking someone's brain out and looking at it separately. You can't do that apart from the person themselves. Because, uh, because religion it actually is all about faith. It's about lived experience. It's about encounter with God. Um, so there is an element of that, you know, religious studies has its place. Um, I think the, the other thing I'd, I'd want to go on, so it seems to me that you know, we need to do that because in order to understand religion in its fullness, one has to inhabit it and see its internal dynamics. Um, but I think the other thing about theology is that I've always thought with theology, when, when people come and ask, ask me, should I study theology? The great thing about theological study, it actually touches on just about every human endeavor. Because if you do a if you do a degree in theology, you will do languages, you'll do history, uh, you'll do um, anthropology, uh, you'll do um, you know cultural studies, you'll do philosophy, uh, you will do just about every other area of endeavor is caught up in this great um, venture of theology. Because you know, ultimately, if theology is about it, it's you know, it's it's two words theos logos, it's words about God, being able to speak truly and rightly about God who was the object of our or the, the, the source of our being and the one to whom we return. It actually gives, it, 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 it means an inquiry into the biggest questions of them all. And theology, properly speaking, allows you to ask those questions in a way that very few other disciplines do. So on the one hand, I think in order to understand the modern world, you've got to understand theology. But on the other hand, it seems to me theology opens up a whole series of the of the biggest questions and it gives you all kinds of ways of, be, of, of approaching those in a way that very few other disciplines do and so I, it just seems to me endlessly fascinating and I don't know why anyone else would not would want to do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> so is there something then methodological even that, that theology has to offer to even if mm. maybe even to people who aren't are, are, don't share those sorts of commitments a kind sure. of a way of yep. thinking holistically about yeah. the world and those yeah. big questions? Well I think that is right I mean I think um, Regardless of whether you come to theology with a faith or, or without it, um, theology does give you this very, um, uh, this very comprehensive way of exploring big questions uh, in a way that not many other disciplines do. You know, if you, if you do a history degree, you're looking at things primarily historically. Um, at, um, and obviously there are other aspects to it too, but you don't get the, some, some of the, um, the philosophical, the linguistic, uh, the cultural anthropological questions that come into into the study of theology. So um, so there is a methodolog methodological aspect of it. I mean, I, I still think there's a big difference between doing theology with a faith and without a faith. Uh, it's one of the slight anomaly, um, anomalous things about university theology often that, you know, you don't have to have a faith to study theology. Um, but I think it's a very different thing doing it when you do have a faith. And uh, I'm not saying that doing theology without a faith is not worth something, but I just think it's a very different experience. Yeah, certainly. Um, so you've talked about uh, three different audiences for theology mm -hmm. and kind of three different, am I hearing you right? Are there, are there three different purposes for theology given each of those three different audiences or is there some, mm -hmm. is there mm -hmm. some commonality among yeah. the three of them, something that ties those three purposes sure. together? Yeah. How do we think about that? Yeah. Um, they're not three discrete tasks, it seems to me. They're not three different things. It seems to be worship, um, kind of reform and, and witness uh, are integrally related in a sense that they, and I think the starting point is crucial, if, that if, if the primary um, audience of theological work is God, mm -hmm. that actually it, it's primarily worship. It's primarily simply our response of um, wonder and inquiry and um, desire to articulate God as he reveals himself to us. It seems to be, if that's the primary mode of theology, that then can work itself out both as reform in the light of this, 
the God whom we are discovering, who, who God has, re- you know, who has revealed Himself to us. What does that mean, therefore, for the church and how the church lives, so that the church is more true to the God who has revealed Himself to us? What does that then mean for the world? Um, that's when it becomes witness. And so it seems to me that the, the, the primary mode of theology is this theology as worship, but that then plays itself out into, towards the church and the world in two separate ways. So I think there is a unity to it. Um, um, but I think we, we, we need to keep in focus the audience of the church and the world, because if, if, if theology is just worship with, without any attention at all to what that means for the church or for the world, then it's missing something quite significant. Um, if theology loses that dimension of worship, uh, again, it loses its absolute heart, it seems to me, and it becomes quite functional, mm. and it com- becomes quite descriptive, mm. uh, and it doesn't involve the heart and the soul as much as the mind. So, um, yeah. Um, so you are you are engaged. You've you've uh, been engaged with theology in uh, uh, several different mm. different contexts. Uh, you've mm. taught at Oxford. Mm. Um, you've now uh, helped start uh, create a different sort of mm. theological institution at mm. Saint uh, Melitus. Um, what is um, what what is what have you learned about theology um, mm. Mm. by uh, in the process of starting Saint uh, Saint yeah. Melitus? Yeah. Uh, which it, we should say. Well, maybe you could first say a little bit about yeah, exactly what sure. you're doing at Saint Melitus and, and what you've yeah. learned there. Yeah. Well, as, as you say, I was in uh, Oxford for um, 16 years teaching theology uh, there. Uh, moved to London about 11 years ago now to um, to help set up a kind of new experiment in theological education. Um, and the new experiment was to tie it much more closely to the church. Uh, so this wasn't founded in a university faculty or, or, or even within a kind of diocese. It was actually closely connected to a particular local church, Holy Trinity Brompton, but also the two dioceses of London and Chelmsford that we work very closely with. So it was very much much you know, emerged out of in, in partnership with the church. Um, and also doing theology in a way that was much more tied into the practice of ministry and Christian life uh, so rather than taking people away to a seminary for three years to do broadly, mainly academic studies, because this was primarily about um, doing theology for Christian ministry, uh, we basically left our students in, in, in churches and, and we enabled them to do theology while they're engaged in actual Christian ministry. And I think what I've learned from that is um, I mean, two things. One is I think theology comes alive in, a, in, a, in, in new ways when you do it in the church. Um, Actually, I think originally that's where it started. It's where it belongs. Uh, and it's good that it's done in other contexts like universities and seminaries, which are sort of halfway between the university and, and the church. Um, but actually, we need to, 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 to do more theology in local church contexts. And that can be a struggle because churches are often not used to that. Um, but uh, um, when you do theology in the context of, 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 of the church, actually you find people coming alive in, in, in their faith in all kinds of ways. We've seen people um, discovering whole new dimensions of their Christian life by engaging with their minds, with, um, with theological work. So I think, I think there's a sense that, that theology really belongs in the church and we ought to do more of it in, 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 in church contexts. I think the other thing I've learned is that again, theology comes alive in the practice of Christian life that there's an intimate connection between the two. Um, when we train our, our ordinands in theology, we, we almost deliberately, um, you've got to throw them in the deep end and then you have to learn how to swim. And learning how to swim is not just pra- practically, pragmatically, it's theologically as well. And there's something about bringing the experiences of, of ministry, the experiences of success, of failure, of um, pastoral tragedy of, of, of great joy in ministry, bringing those to the theological task, engaging those with um, what students are learning about the theological tradition and, and getting that conversation going between Christian life and ministry and, and theology. That's when some really sparky things happen. Um, and it's a different kind of enterprise. It, 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 you get, I find different questions come my way in some Melitus than I used to in Oxford. And in Oxford, I would get students asking me, you know, what was the influence of late medieval nominalism on Luther's doctrine of justification? Um, good question. I don't get that question quite so often when, I, when I'm in um, St. Melitus because the, the questions are different. Mm-hmm. They're actually, you know, what, what does Luther's doctrine of justification say to this person who asked me this question in the Alpha course last week? 
uh, about their own sense of anxiety, about not having achieved very much in their life. What does that say to that? Well, that's the kind of question you get, which is a, which is a real life question. And so it's a, it, it, theology becomes different. It becomes, it's, not, it's not that it's less academic. It's not, not that it's less serious. Yeah. Um, but it's a, it, it, it comes to life in new ways. Yeah, that, that's what's really interesting to me in particular about what you're doing is that it's not just a church training program. Yeah. This is not yeah. just training in church ministry. You're offering a theological yeah. education exactly. in, in the depth of that. Mm. Um, mm. Has that been, um, I suppose, how, how have you in institution building made sure mm. that, that it, because it seems like there are these kind of two, mm. two t poles. The one just pull into, ah, it's just an academic program. Uh, yeah. The other would be just a training program. Yeah. But you're, yeah. you're trying to do something in between. How do you hold that tension? I think that's right. I mean, I've seen a lot of churches start to do their own training program. Churches have become a little bit um, frustrated with university faculties or seminaries and thought, well, it's all too academic. We need to train our own people. Um, but by and large, they tend to be quite, um, you know, leadership training colleges with lots of stuff on management and leadership, and they bring in gurus from different companies and, and so on. And, and that, that's good. That's, that's, that's a valuable thing. But the, there's not often a great deal of theological reflection in that. And I guess what we've tried to do is to, to, to do some of that, um, but actually to keep it profoundly theological. And I guess right, right from the very beginning, we felt that was important, that for us, doing theology in the context of the church wasn't going to mean a kind of dumbing down of theology or a, or, or, a, or a lack of academic seriousness or a, um, or a lack of, of real profound engagement with the theological tradition. Um, so it's, it's partly by holding that as a, um, as, as a value, making sure when we hire people we don't just hire you know, leadership experts, but we hire theologians. Mm. Um, but theologians um, who have a passion for the church and who want to see the church thrive and, and, and grow and who see the connections between theology and Christian life. Mm. Um, so particular kind of theologians we tend to, tend to employ. Um, and uh, I mean, see, see, it's not always easy because sometimes churches don't always necessarily see the need for, for serious theology. Sometimes the churches themselves can be quite pragmatic and how do we train our leaders and all that kind of thing. Um, and you want to take that and but keep on saying to them, actually, they really need theology. Because actually, if you're going to sustain a life of ministry, you need to know God. If you don't have your vision of God clear, if you're not doing the kind of theology that is theology as prayer, that actually you're going to burn out pretty quickly. So um, that's, I think, how we try to do it. Graham, this has been a great conversation, and I look forward to the conversation we're going to have over the next uh, next couple of days. Yeah, me too. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Matt. Very good to chat.